So Joe Moorhead is now the uh, the man, the coach that uh, Mississippi State fans, I'm sure, over the last couple of weeks have become very familiar with. Suddenly, probably a guy that uh, hasn't necessarily been on uh, a lot of people's radar, but uh, very successful at Penn State as an offensive mind and very similar, at least on the surface, to Dan Mullen, considering his coaching specialty and what he's known for. But uh, what else have you picked up and what's been the response uh, from yourself, uh, the staff there at uh, For Whom the Cowbell Tolls, and uh, Mississippi State fans? Oh, well, we've embraced Joe, he- Joe Moorhead uh, pretty extremely well. Um, it's interesting, during this entire coaching search, which lasted a whopping 48 hours, um, it, it was sort of this like back and forth, back and forth, but throughout, there was a consistent theme throughout the entire coaching search, and that was up-and-coming major assistants, some uh, more well-known than others, and like Joe Moorhead, some under the, under the radar. So as previously mentioned, since the coaching search was only about 48 hours, about 30 of those hours, it seemed like Jeremy Pruitt was the leading candidate at Mississippi State, which was getting very positive reception due to his recruiting base in the South, his familiarity with the SEC. Uh, Brent Venables, Clemson's defensive coordinator, was another one that uh, popped up, but not until the night before Joe Moorhead's hire was reported, did Joe Moorhead's name really pop up as a legitimate candidate? And I knew of Joe Moorhead. I don't think, I, if I would put a percentage of the number of Mississippi State fans who knew who Joe, Joe Moorhead was, it's probably an extreme minority, probably around 15%. And as, guys, and as people started doing their homework, the response to Joe Moorhead got more and more positive. I mean, if you if you just look at the numbers, when he takes over the Penn State offense in 2016, the year before they ranked 101st nationally in uh, points per game, which um, averaging 20 around 23.2 points per game, which is pretty dismal. Uh, in his first season, they improved from 101st in the country to 21st in the country in points per game. In this past or this season. They rank seventh, averaging 41.6, which is a drastic improvement, obviously. He's got head coaching experience, being the head coach at Fordham for four years. Uh, if The year before he got there, they went 1-10 in 2011. His first year, 2012, they go 6-5. and five, And soon they were winning the Patriot League Championship in 2014, making it to three straight FCS playoffs and compiling an overall record of 38-13 and 13 before taking over the offensive coordinator position at Penn State. Before going to Fordham, he was the offensive coordinator at UConn, uh, his best season being in 2010, helping lead the Huskies to a Big East championship and going to the Fiesta Bowl, which if we are familiar with the UConn football program, no offense to them, but that's pretty remarkable, winning a conference championship and going to the Fiesta Bowl, especially with where UConn is currently. You mentioned it's extremely similar to the Dan Mullen hire, and this is why I personally and a lot of Mississippi State fans are so or so for this hire is because it's sort of a continuation of what's been going on. Had we hired Jeremy Pruitt or Brent Venables, they would have been good hires from the standpoint of they're extremely familiar with the South and they're very good recruiters, but it would sort of throw off this theme that we've had for nine years. It's been extremely successful under Dan Mullen of a very strong off a, an offensive based coach, uh, bring in a defensive coordinator. Uh, if we have a good defensive coordinator higher, then the pieces are going to be there. We're going to be a good football team with the offensive-minded head coach and a defensive-minded coordinator. And that's what our athletic director, John Cohen, did with Joe Moorhead. And I do want to mention one thing about John Cohen, our athletic director. Uh, what he has done, he's only been our athletic director for a year since Scott Strickland left to go to Florida. Um, he's already had to make four head coaching hires, two including two in the big two, big three sports, one in baseball uh, because he was our former baseball coach, and one in football. And I know that a number of uh, these football fans watching probably don't pay a whole lot of attention to college baseball, but I'll, I just want to mention this one thing about John Cohen. When Cohen was a promoted, uh, you could say promoted to our athletic director position, he hired a coach as our head baseball coach who had been a college coach for a grand total of two years as an assistant coach at LSU. Before that, he was a scout for the New York Yankees, and we hired him as our head baseball coach. And his first season, we went to the Super Regionals, which is basically the baseball equivalent of the Sweet 16 in the NCAA basketball tournament. And Mark, you're working in Mississippi. You know that in terms of tradition-rich programs in each sport, baseball is sort of Mississippi State's crown jewel. 
So the fact that John Cohen would go out and hire an unknown coach like that, Andy Canizero being our baseball coach, it's similar with Joe Moorhead, an under-the-radar guy. It's not a super flashy hire, but when we look at it, it's a really good hire. And Joe Moorhead is what he has said he's going to be doing at Mississippi State. It's very similar to what Dan Mullen did. Joe Moorhead's going to be calling plays. Uh, that's something that Dan Mullen's been doing since 2014 which from 2014 to present has really been his most successful time at Mississippi State. Um, he's going to bring in co-offensive coordinators, one of which Charles Huff has already been hired. Um, and furthermore, he's bringing in a talented offense. We're bringing back Nick Fitzgerald at quarterback, Arius Williams at running back, including a host of others at running back like Kylan Hill and Nick Gibson. And we're bringing back four offensive linemen. So the pieces are all there. And that's why I think this hire is so I'm not. It's it's. it's I'm not going to say remarkable. I'm not going to call it a home run because you know we don't. We haven't seen him coach yet, and he's only been a head coach at the FCS level. But it has the pieces there to be an extremely successful hire, and um, it's most definitely a hire that Mississippi State fans um, call think are is extremely success, successful. And if you look at just the the stops for Joe Moorhead nothing's going to jump off the page because you typically see someone get hired to that caliber of a program as head coach. And you look at the long line, even if they haven't coached as in the head coaching position at that level, and you see a long list of major college programs, and you're going to see a lot of Akron's. And as you mentioned, Georgetown and Connecticut more recently, and you're not going to be wowed by the the stops. You know, there's not Miami and Wisconsin and Michigan, anything like that. But then you put it into context as you just did. And it's, it's quite impressive what he's been able to accomplish. And his reputation is very high. Uh, Penn State had the personnel to be a better offense before that. They had Christian Hackenberg in play at quarterback. They had two NFL wide receivers, and they just weren't getting the job done. And as you mentioned, Joe Moorhead takes over. They become one of the more dynamic offenses in college football over the past few seasons. And again, his reputation in listening to anyone, and I heard James Franklin uh, talk about him just a few weeks ago or a few days ago, and uh, he was rather complimentary about what Joe Moorhead uh, did there at Penn State uh, from the standpoint of coaching, scheming, and also just in regards to his impact on players and uh, the reputation and the um, the character and uh, the respect that he gained there at Penn State.